I got 12 ounces of water in here. Gonna set it on this pot. Ooh. Maybe I won't. Ooh. This is going to be a review on the Alox uh, alcohol stove. You can get it on Amazon for roughly around $15. And it comes with a carrying case, which is decent quality. It comes with the alcohol burner. It comes with the snuffer. And it comes with the pot stand. Um, <clears throat> this is not mine. It's a buddy of mine's. Uh, but... The Trangia stove is, it's been proven over and over again. People on the Appalachian Trail, people, like a lot of people, backpackers, through hikers and stuff use them. Um, because they're simple, because they're durable, you know, because they're no frills, and because they're inexpensive. But, on Amazon, this isn't a Trangia stove, but just to get this unit, Trangia, is between $15 and $20. With this kit, as far as I can tell, this is... <clears throat> identical to a Trangia stove, but you get the addition of this anodized aluminum, I believe it's aluminum, it's very lightweight, um, pot stand slash wind block. So this whole unit without the carrying case weighs in at 146 grams or 5.2 ounces. Now, real quick these are some alcohol pop can stoves or sweet tea can stoves that i've made in the past these weigh <clears throat> 0 0.7 ounces <clears throat> but and this one's even lighter this is like 0 0.4 this is this weighs half an ounce <clears throat> the problem with these is you don't have any wind block you still have to carry a pot stand because you can't set pots or cups right on here otherwise it doesn't work and there's no way to seal this. The benefit of being able to seal the stove means you don't have to empty it out after every use and alcohol evaporates very very quickly. So maybe some of you don't know. You got three pieces. So you got the cap slash kind of the snuffer and then you have the screw top lid with a good seal and then you have the reservoir where you put the alcohol. Now the person that I'm borrowing this from for review, he, when he gave this to me, it was already full of alcohol. And I don't know the last time he used it, but he had it screwed tight. You can crank on this, you know, it is metal. You can crank on this super tight so it's totally airtight. It doesn't leak, which I'll, I'll demonstrate in a second once I fill it up. And it seals it so you don't have that evaporation problem. So you throw this in the pack for say a day hike or something like that, full of alcohol, and you can get a couple cooks out of this. And you're talking about really compact, the alcohol might weigh a few ounces to the total weight, but like I said, you're working with 5.2 ounces. It's not heavy whatsoever. So this goes in here like so. I'm gonna be semi-scientific, so I'm gonna be using uh, heat. Uh, this is Gasline Antifreeze and Water Remover. They make a red bottle and a yellow bottle. I don't know the difference. I'm sure they both work. I just happen to have the yellow bottle. Okay, so this is, it's it's about down here, so it's a quarter or so bottle. Um, instead of dumping it straight in, I'm going to dump it into this vessel. This is alcohol too, guys, so it's not the best to get it under skin, it will dry it out, but uh, just keep that in mind. And then I'm just going to use this uh, syringe here. So that right there is 2 ounces or uh, what is that, 60 milliliters. So I'm going to see how much capacity this stove has. So I hope it can hold at least 2 ounces, we'll see. So hopefully you guys can see 
Hopefully you guys can see that if it will focus in. Um, I did a little under four ounces and it's right up to the brim. It's, it's right there, but it hasn't overflowed. So its capacity is like four ounces or hair below. So I'm going to light this up real quick. Uh, wish me luck. And then while it kind of primes itself, uh, we'll talk about what we're going to do in the rest of this test. That was pretty easy. A lot of people say you can't use a lighter and you have to use matches because you got to get it down there. I just used a lighter just now and it lit up right away. So hopefully it's getting it on camera. I am indoors. There's no wind. There's no breeze whatsoever. I'm going to run a second test where I bring this outside in some like 10, 15 mile an hour wind and see how well it works there. My initial impressions this works a lot better than my pop can stoves. Okay, so I really wanted to use the Stanley uh, cook set, but it turns out this, it's not that safe. It's like just too small to fit on this base. So I'm going to use the old standby, the GI canteen cup. So I'm just going to dump the water I had in it into the canteen cup and we'll continue. Okay, so 12 ounces of water. Um, let's see the best way to do this. Like so, it's pretty stable. Let me just center it. Ooh, it's, uh, it's not that stable. And we will start the timer. So my impression so far, uh, this is one of the fastest alcohol stoves I have ever used. Um, we're at three minutes, a little over three minutes, and I'm already starting to see some micro boil bubbles. I can hear some sizzling and I see the little, I call them little eyeballs or whatever on the bottom. When you look down you see all those little kind of bubbles and they look like fish eyes. Um, I'm already starting to see some of those. I can see steam coming off and I didn't even put a cap on this so if I would have covered this cup up um, it probably would already be boiling um, this is the other benefit and people will think this is hokey and whatnot but the benefit well I won't call it a benefit but this stove does take longer to heat it puts out a less it's a more subtle heat <laughs> in essence less heat less BTUs you know um, the benefit though is, okay, we're working at four minutes. So say you're cold, say you're going to sit down and make some chai tea, coffee, whatever, um, cider, cocoa. Say you're cold, maybe that's the reason, you can warm your hands. So this, I'm pretty close and it's not burning my hands, but it is pretty warm. And yeah, some people will say you can do that with all the stoves, but a lot of those quick, quick stoves like the Jet Boil and the, uh, the MSR Pocket Rocket, it boils so bloody fast that by the time you sit down and be able to do this, your water's already boiling. So, hopefully you might be able to hear it on camera. It's bubbling. I'm going to move my camera away in case it boils over, but I'll, I'll, I'm just still going to track the time. Again, we're working with 12 ounces of water. So some people might say, that's not that much water and whatnot. Well, for a single person to make a cup of tea, you know, stuff like that, it's it's suitable it's just enough another thing I like about this stove is maybe the way it's engineered or something like that my pop can stoves I would always have to check and check and recheck to make sure it's still going with this I see a blue flame right over here I can feel the heat coming off of it my other stoves maybe I didn't make them correctly or I didn't use the most efficient design but 
hopefully you can see the timer in the bottom of the screen there. We're at six minutes, so I'm just going to open these tea bags. Um, these are stash, chai, black tea, an awesome, awesome remedy for sore throat, especially in the winter. Um, I like my tea extra strong, so I use two tea bags. I like these individually packaged tea bags because, and I know you can get loose leaf tea and stuff like that, but these individually packaged ones, they're a lot more convenient, and because they're sealed, right, you know, as opposed to getting a big box of them, right when you open the individual packet, it's, you can smell it, you know, so it, I guess they, they last longer, you could say. So as you can see, we're a little over seven minutes along, and to some people, you would consider that a boil. I'm going to let it go a little bit longer, but you can see that just straight, that wide blue flame, I never got that with any of my pop can stoves. Um, okay, so I would consider that a rolling boil. I'm going to get back on tripod and we'll continue. Eight minutes. I'm going to consider that the final boil time. So, what, I, what am I going to do? I'm going to remove, use the cup, push the stove over. I'm going to put my two tea bags in, let that steep a little bit, and then let's figure out how you use this, this cap system. So, I think. As you can see, I never understood it, but that wire thing comes out, it's like a little handle, so that way you don't have to get as close to the flame. And you just put this on top. Didn't work that well, but it is dying down. Hmm. I think it's putting out the flame. Maybe you gotta hold it on here for a while. Yeah, it's totally out now. Ooh, it's kinda hot. That worked rather well. Like I said, a lot better than any of the pop can stoves I made. Okay, so we will stir this tea up a little bit. Dip these in a few more times to get the most flavor. Press them against the sides to extract most of the flavor. So, overall, I'm just waiting for the tea to brew a little longer and actually to cool down. Still pretty hot, but tastes pretty good. It's one of the best remedies to get rid of a uh, sore throat, kind of an itchy uh, throat, cough, sinus. It can clear your sinuses up, and it, it's hot, so especially on like days when it's just really bloody cold, um, this is a pretty good remedy. So enough about me talking about my uh, chai tea. Let's talk about this stove. It didn't burn that much fuel. When I started, it was up to the brim, and it went down maybe half an inch or so. Yeah, less than that. Three quarters of an inch, or three eighths of an inch. Okay, so this is the stove. Not leaking. You can hear it jostling around in there, but it's not leaking. Small, compact. It actually feels good. This is kind of multi-use, you know, if you're out, you know, in the cold and whatnot. This, it's not burning my hands, but it's still really warm. So you could hold this and help it cool down. You could uh, warm your hands up in the process. Um, but, I mean, again, don't burn yourselves just to warm your hands up. Um, this pot stand is durable. I mean, I... I wouldn't stand on it. You know, some of them you can flip upside down, stand, and they're like, hey, look how strong this is. It's not titanium. I like titanium in some things, but I think it's overused in a lot of aspects. 
some people don't like the health risks behind using aluminum cookware and that's totally a totally valid point but when it comes to like this it's not coming in contact with food plus it's coated aluminum um, you don't need titanium this it weighs the same as titanium would you know maybe half ounce more or less or whatever but on the grand scale I mean this is equal to titanium is it as strong as titanium no but it doesn't need to be I mean you're not going to be putting a big you know 30 pound cast iron kettle on here and you know boiling down maple syrup or something like that uh, you're you're the most you're going to be putting on here is maybe three four pounds and you know and I don't, I'm not saying this can only hold that much weight but you know come on stay realistic guys this is a fifteen dollar stove but the finishing of this it's I like the feel of this and like I said it doesn't have to be titanium and then I like the way that this integrates all together there's some tabs in there so this is in there flipped upside down and I mean eventually it might wiggle it wait itself out but that's why they include the storage sack there you got these two it's probably one drawstring you got two drawstrings actually you just pull it you got the beads There you go, you can even tie a knife knot to be extra secure. But there it is, that would be your entire cooking system, your stove. So you'd still have to carry a cup or a pot, something like that, and if it was a long trip, you'd still have to carry alcohol with you. But even keeping at your house, in case, like, say you gotta cook and the natural gas is turned off, or your electricity's out, and stuff like that, this won't be cooking don't plan on making big meals with this but for like like I just made a cup of tea so if there's a power outage it's super cold your house is getting you know really cold and you were foolish you don't have a backup form of heat something like that um you know a warm glass of tea or a canteen cup of tea can go a long way to keeping you warm increasing your core body temperature just increasing your spirits and your mood and stuff like that So again, I hope you guys liked this video. I sure did. I liked filming it, and I liked the product overall. I think it's... I, I would buy this over the Trangia just because you get that pot sand and whatnot, and it's the same identical thing. Um, it does what it needs to do. It's $15. It's um, compact. comes with a carry case and all the pieces I talked about. It's, what, 5 ounces, super compact you can't go wrong with this so it's still good to have a jet boil or a, a MSR pocket rocket or a two burner Coleman stove or a gas grill you know all that stuff for alternative ways to heat and cook food but you know something small compact like this hell you could even keep this in your car keep this along with a bottle of this or two bottles of this and uh, you'll you'll put this in your gas tank and then say you go off the road and you call a tow truck and they say we'll be there in two hours and it's cold and you gotta stay in your car you could potentially you know as long as you do it safely light up your stove and heat the inside of your car um, alcohol does burn really clean it doesn't have any odor to it and it does release carbon monoxide but you know crack a window and just be safe you know but uh, overall for fifteen dollars you guys I mean, can't really go wrong with this. You got to go to Amazon, just add it to your cart, and whenever you do another order, um, that's over thirty-five dollars or whatever to get free shipping. Uh, just throw that in your cart as an add-on item or whatever to get your your cost up over thirty-five bucks. And uh, you know, a car survival kit, winter survival kit. Throw one of these in. You don't deal with the freezing gas and stuff of other stoves, and you can cook. You can make cocoa. You can use it as a heat source. And then, like I said the heat you can always you know you'll always use this you know once you buy this you know you can throw it in your gas tank whenever but a lot of times people do it more in the winter when you know water in the gas and gas lines and whatnot is more of an issue but overall guys i think it's an excellent buy i'm going to add this to a playlist of just best buy go out and buy this stuff pet gear but until next time make sure to subscribe to my channel 
Um, if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. But until next time, stay safe, be prepared.